Hi there, I hope you are doing well. The latest breaking news is that Rwanda or the Rwandan government has shot down a Congolese military fighter jet. And Rwanda says that this fighter jet briefly violated their airspace as it was landing or approaching to land at the Goma International Airport, which is an airport right at the border of Rwanda and Congo. And in a video shared widely on Congolese social media and even on the Rwandan social medias, showed a projector shooting towards an airborne military plane before exploding in the air near that plane. Even that, the plane continued to fly. It was later identified to be a Sukhoi Su-25 from the Congolese Air Force. And in the video, you can see the pilot getting out quickly, you know, scrambling to get out because the plane was on fire. And some photos and images shared show the plane had been damaged on the right side. So the right wing had been damaged and the lower part of the plane by the shrapnel from that missile or rocket, whatever it was, that hit or tried to hit that plane. This particular incident marks another escalation between these two countries. And from what I'm seeing is that Rwanda wants a war. Rwanda badly wants a war with Congo. Or Paul Kagame wants to start a war with Congo. And the Congolese government doesn't seem to be interested in giving him that war. It goes without saying that Rwanda provoked Congo by shooting down one of their planes. This is just a direct provocation from Rwanda to the Congolese government. And I'm going to demonstrate why that is so. And, you know, if Rwanda says that they have to defend their airspace or their airspace was violated and that they have a right to defend their airspace, that is justified. But under what circumstances? I'm going to demonstrate that Rwanda actually violated Congolese airspace, not the other way around, in a short while. This here is Google Earth. So as you can see, this is the Goma International Airport. So that plane or the Skoi Su-25 was coming to land here. And as you can see, and so that you understand what we are talking about, this line here is the border between the two countries. This side on the right, that is Rwandan air, uh, the, the side. And the left side is the city of Goma, and that is the Congolese side. And how what happens normally, if you can look at this airport, is that planes have to land from the south, from this tip here, and then end to the north end, and that's why you see this thing that looks like a roundabout, and they turn around and taxi to this part where you can see other planes parked. That's how this airport operates. So the landing has to be south, and the takeoff has, from, has to be from north to south. Mostly that's how it works. And as you can see, that's how it is designed so that a plane has to land from the south tip here on the on the uh, on the right. So it lands all the way and then stops at the northern tip. That's how it works here. Now, something you need to notice is that there's no time any plane, whether military or civilian, will ever land at this airport without briefly entering the Rwandan airspace. And the Rwandan airspace is above the lake. That is Lake Kivu. So a plane will normally come from whatever location, come do a sea turn over this island, the Ijui, or the Ijui island, and then turn north. And by turning north, briefly, it will violate the airspace here. This place here, you can see. This way, it will violate the airspace above near this location written Chugi. So this is where the airspace violation happens for any airplane, whether civilian or military, that is going to land at this airport because now they have to approach from the south. So momentarily or briefly, they have to overfly what is Rwandan side of the lake and then come down and now land at this airport. So now you understand. Now I'm going to take you to another part. This is a website called Flight Ladder. And I was able to track that plane. Now it is usually not common for military plane to be tracked by this website because most of the time they do not turn on their transponders or their tracking device. But remember Congo is not trying to hide. They are not at war with any countries at the moment. So this plane left Beni 
Uh, the original data showed that it left the Beni where we have these insurgents that are attacking villages in that region. And these insurgents, people have said, they are mostly maybe supported again by Uganda. And Uganda has sent their soldiers to pretend that they are fighting the, these insurgents. And they are mostly from this region, Beni, as you can see here. And Uganda is on the right. And the plane came, I think, somewhat briefly landed at Kishishe, the this place, there's an airstrip uh, I showed you the, the other time, and then left Kishishe and flew to Goma. As you can see, the flight radar shows that the plane at around 16.30 from their data was flying over here and did turn because it's a military plane. It even make a, a huge curve or a huge turn. It turned within the Congolese airspace and briefly, it didn't even come near this location of Chugi. Very briefly, made a very quick turn above the lake and now started descending down on the airport. So Rwanda now, the Rwandan people or the Rwandan soldiers were waiting for it and maybe they spotted it on from this side and shot at it. And from the data, the Congolese government ha are saying that the moment that missile or the manipad or whatever thing they shot at it came into contact with the plane, it was already above the Congolese airspace. So Rwanda shot a plane above Congolese airspace. That's that's the fact. That's the technical fact. The moment that rocket or that shrapnel came into contact with that plane, it was no longer above the lake. It was above this neighborhood and you as you can recall from that video it was taken by a congolese villager or a, a resident of this town of goma and the plane is obviously above uh settled se settlement it is above those settlements so meaning it is above here so the plane had passed this place you can see called uh, the avenue de revolution it was above here it was above somewhere around here it was just approaching the airport and that's why we saw once it was hit it started it caught fire but managed to land because the shooting happened not on the rwandan side it wasn't above rubavu it wasn't above Giseni. it wasn't above any settlement above rwanda it was in congolese airspace and i know how it works sometimes you can use your radar station to track a plane but the moment you fire the missile takes time to, to even catch up with a plane that is flying probably at more than 400 miles per hour. So by the time that missile catches up with the plane, it's no longer where you had spotted it. It has made some, you know, coverage. So if they targeted the plane when it was above this part of the lake, which is obviously the Rwandan side, the moment that missile was able to do its tracking and correcting its trajectory, the plane had already left that location. So the moment the action or the real crime happened, it was no longer in the, on the Rwandan side. It was inside the Congolese airspace. And I don't know how or what the Congolese government is going to, they are going to do, but the fact remains that Rwanda shot a Congolese aircraft above Congolese airspace. That's a fact. I mean, otherwise, where did the, happen, the action happen? You understand? It's like if you are in your window in your house, and you shoot a gun towards my house on the other side of the street. And the bullet catches me. The crime happened in my house. It didn't happen in your house. We know you are the one who shot it. But you, of course, the report will say that I was shot inside my house. And that's where the forensic team will come to correct the data. And that's where the crime happened inside my house. Because that's where the bullet hit my body, for example. So this plane was hit above Congolese airspace. That's a fact. So uh, Rwanda, no matter what the Rwandan government are saying that it briefly or it evaluated our airspace, the question remains, did you shoot it above your airspace? Was it above your airspace when you hit it? Of course, the answer is no. Then how do you explain that this plane was above your airspace, but you waited for it to go back to their airspace to shoot it? So basically, you're telling us, I mean, it doesn't make sense, right? So they shot a plane inside Congo above the Congolese airspace just because it had violated. If they had shot it above Rwandan airspace and somehow it even 
fell or landed inside Rwanda, that would be a different story. But here, they shot it, the missile or the shrapnel from that missile hit it above Congolese airspace, above residential re location inside Congo. And citizens of Congo are the ones who took the video of the plane being hit by a missile that came from the Rwandan side, but the plane is above the Congolese side. That is the fact. So that's why Rwanda is provoking Congo to go to war. And if you can watch some of my previous videos, they tell you the reason why. It's about resources. There's some gas above this lake. There's a lot of basically things that is happening here, resources that Rwanda thinks the Congo should not basically, you know, take advantage of, should not exploit so that Rwanda can continue enjoying those resources alone. Th th there are those things. You can watch those previous videos. But the fact remain, this plane didn't even make a cuff. I can even show you another plane f that uses the same airport. We can go back and try to look for a different plane. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see whether we can find a different plane that uh, used that airport today. Uh, where, where are we? Okay, let me see. Uh, hmm, I'm going to search Goma, obviously, the airport, Goma International Airport, and see arrivals, the planes that arrived uh, not tomorrow, but the ones that did today. Uh, so today was 24th, Ethiopian airline. So this plane was from, it's a Boeing that came from Ethiopia. If you look at the flight information, or you just play back how it it entered that country and you're going to find that let me just check okay let me see whether this came. yeah you can see the plane left ethiopia flew of course above kenya the northeastern or western part of kenya entered uganda you can see that and then came to goma it did the same loop so it came flew in a circle, entered briefly above the Rwandan side, above the lake, but the Rwandan side of the airspace, and came to land at the airport, just like that fighter jet. So it came and it landed at the airport and then did the ta it did a taxied to the parking part, the parking lot. So that's how the planes do it. And you, as you can see, this Ethiopian, because it's civilian, and it has the license to even overfly Rwanda. It did a bigger loop. But the Congolese one, we saw it did just kind of didn't even actually enter Rwanda. It came through here. You, you can see that. It didn't really enter Rwanda. It quickly turned around here. Slightly entered Rwanda so that it can make a nice angle for the airport. So that's what happened. It's not like these planes violated the Rwandan airspace because they, they want to. It's not like they are violent. It's not like the Congolese people are people who want to just violate people's airspace. It's not like that. And that's what the Rwandan government is trying to say. It's not anything like that. It's how it is. It's something out of goodwill so that they can approach this airport, this airstrip that was designed this way. So now the Rwandan government has gone ahead to just shoot down a plane. Now, fortunately, the pilot is not dead, uh, but the plane won't be flying anytime soon, you know. 